Good morning. How are you doing? This is early for me. I haven't preached a 9 a.m. service since pre-COVID. Oh, my goodness. I've been spoiled for too long here. It sounds like we're going to get real busy here by next week. Things are, things are moving very quickly as a church. We found great favor in the eyes of the Lord, and God has decided to bless us with more. Tell your neighbor, more is coming. There's more coming. God is very pleased with the work efforts done here in San Bernardino, and he's ready to expand our borders as we move across this planet and, and take souls away from the devil and bring them back to Jesus Christ. Are you guys ready to do that? You're called to do that. You're called to participate in that. You're called to help facilitate this great move of God, whether you feel like it or realize it or even understand it or can even comprehend that God can use a person like you. Yes, he can. And you've been called by God, and you are part of the team. Tell your neighbor, I'm part of the team. Uh-huh. You're part of the team, despite your resume, despite your past, despite all your failures, despite all, everything that you've done wrong. You are part of the family of God, and you're part of the body of Christ, and you're going to be a part of this great move of God. Amen? How many believe that? Just by a show of hands, and I'm going to try and look through this fog and this haze, uh, how many fathers do we have in the building today? Just raise your hand at me. Go ahead and stand to your feet right now. I just, I can't really see the hands. Don't get mad at me for making me stand. I saw some of those faces. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The fathers, the father don't want to do nothing on Father's Day. I don't even want to stand up in church. Uh, praise the Lord. You came to the house of God today, and uh, you should be commended for that. Because you could have been at home uh, starting the barbecue. You could have been doing a lot of things. But here you are in the, in the house of the Lord. And, and we just want to honor you today. Praise God. Now, don't sit down just yet. I just want to have a question. Remain standing if you felt like you've been a good father. Uh, have you been a good father? Now, this is one of the things that I wrestle with. This is kind of a tough message for me because I, these are the things that gnaw at me at night, you know, because I want to be able to please God in every capacity of life, and I, I want to please my family, and I want to do good. But being a father, now you can sit down. Being a father, for me, was no easy task. Maybe for you, you guys are stood proudly. Well, praise the Lord, I should have hung around you more. But for me, it's like no easy task being a father. You know, as a father, you're expected to do certain things, to act a certain way. You're supposed to be strong. Everyone in the family anticipates you to be the strong one. You're the one that breaks open the cans for all everyone in the house that can't turn the lid on, the jiffy peanut butter or the mayonnaise, uh, you're the one that they go to. Hey, Dad, take that can to Dad. He'll be the one to crack that thing open, and you're over there. But everybody expects you to be the one to open it. Everyone expects the father to be the one who's courageous, the one who locks up the house at night. If, if there's a noise outside, the father is expected to be the one who goes out there and checks it out. Um, you're, you're expected to maybe uh, kill all the rodents in the house, the spiders and, and all the things that come with the creepy crawlies that come out in the night. Hey, you're expected to, well, I don't want to kill a spider. I, I'm trying to get my daughter to kill the spiders. Why am, I those, why am I the designated one to kill all the spiders? I don't like spiders either, but just because I'm the father, I'm the one that's expected to kill them all. I don't, I don't understand that. 
You're expected to be a provider. How many fathers are, pro, are providers here in the house this morning? You're expected to be a provider. You're expected to bring provision into the house. And, and it can get a little stressful when the cupboards are running empty, uh, when the bank account is running low, and uh, you're not sure how you're going to pay the mortgage, pay the bills. And it's a lot of stress because everyone's turning to the father to kind of figure out this path or figure out an outlet for the family. We got real quiet. I love 9 a.m. service. You guys are good listeners. A father expects to have all the answers too. All the answers. Everyone goes to the father for all the answers. That puts a lot of weight on one person. Puts a lot of high expectations on, on a man or a human being. You're expected to be loving. You're expected to be a disciplinarian. That's a lot, of, a lot of things, especially if you've never been taught those things. Especially maybe if your father was never around for you. How are you expected to do these things when you've never been taught yourself? Is there anyone here that didn't have a father while being raised up? It was just kind of you and mom, and now you're a father, and, and you're, you're having to take the reins, and it's really, really difficult. It's a struggle. It, it's really, really hard to feel those shoes that you know nothing about. And that's how it was for me, because I didn't meet my father until I was 36 years old. I'm 51 now. Uh, when I met him at 36 years old, he called me and said he was moving to California and he wanted to meet me. And I, I was a Christian at the time and I said, praise the Lord, I would love to meet you. He came into my life and he lasted one year because he, he got cancer and died a year later. The year that it was here, we had so much fun. We built things. We, we went places together. We went to the beach, and, and we walked our dogs, and we, we traveled a little bit, and we got really, really close. But towards the end there, the last six months, he got really, really sick, and um, we had to take care of him while he was sick. That was super hard because I was glad to have him in my life after 36 years and to have him go out of my life so suddenly was very difficult. Or even maybe we had to even change him. We had to wash him down. We had to give him food. Uh, we, ha we had to take care of him. I'm thinking like maybe he should have took care of me and I'm taking care of him. And the Lord taught me a lot during that time. He taught me how to be humble, how to love, how, how, to, how to forgive, how, how to show humility. And, and during that time of, of ministering, and I say ministering to my father because he was a rough man. He was a military man. And, and, and when, he, when I met him, he, he, was, he just was really, really tough. But to see him break down, to see the Lord kind of uh, uh, humble him to the degree where he was open to the gospel, I was was able to lead him to Christ the day before he died. Actually, the night that he died, he accepted the Lord. So I thank the Lord for that assignment, but it still didn't change me as a father. I was still inexperienced. I was still trying to figure things out. By the time I really, really got good at being a father, I became a grandpa. I became a grandpa. Things are moving around too, too quickly here. By the time I get good at something, all of a sudden I'm old. I made a lot of mistakes as, as a father. I wish that I could play the tape back and do things differently. At the age of 23, I, I was struggling as a father to raise three boys. Now at 23, I don't know about you, but I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue how life worked. I didn't have no clue how God worked. I didn't know how provision worked. I didn't know anything. And here I was trying to raise three boys. I had no instructions. I had no examples. I had no one to show me how. I had to learn how to be a father from our heavenly father and through the word of God. But that took some time. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of error. It was almost experimental. 
And the ones who really suffered were my children. Because the truth is this, at 23, I couldn't get free for myself. How was I ever going to lead children? I'm struggling to stay sober. I'm struggling to stay employed. I'm struggling over demonic oppression. How am I supposed to lead a family like that? At 23, come on, really, really hard. And so my children had to experience my growth. They had to go through that process with me. And in that process, I made a lot of mistakes. Have you ever been a father who regrets some of the mistakes that you made? Huge, some of the huge mistakes. They would see father in church one week and father in back of a police car the next. Father jumping around in church having a great time and then father being arrested a week later. Because there was a war going on in me. You understand there was change going on in me. And I wasn't quite mature yet. And so my children had to experience my chains. Now, I love it so quiet. You guys are good listeners at 9 a.m. Now, let me share this. I was sharing with Pastor in the back room that yesterday when I was at the gym doing like a fake workout, <laughs> you ever go to the gym and don't put nothing on the bar and just make the gym faces? That's what I was doing. I hadn't been there in three days. I was feeling condemned. And so I go to the gym and, and I was doing nothing there. I told Deanna, I'm going to the gym. I'll be back. And there I am doing nothing. But what I was doing is uh, the Lord, I was speaking to the Lord and the Lord gave me a vision. Now I'm not the guy who tries to have visions. I'm not the guy like who holds my breath until I get a vision. I'm not the guy who's trying to get a prophecy. I'm not that guy. So I know when I had this vision that it came from him, and the vision I saw, I'm going to share with you today. I saw in this vision, I saw a father running. He was a young father. He had a mustache, and because he was running, he was sweating, and his hair was parting as a result. He wanted it to comb back, but it wouldn't stay back. It kept parting when he was sweating, and the Lord says, you're going to meet this man. I said, praise the Lord. And the man was running around a track, almost like a, a jog, where well, you run like the 440 or something, around, around, a, around a running track, a running field. And on the side, I could see that there was a family that was cheering for him. They were cheering like nobody else. You could hear the crowd cheering too, but they weren't cheering as loud as these people, his family that were cheering for this father who was running. And the, the, the first one that was cheering, I could see on the left, it was a daughter. She was about yay high. She had long black hair. And she was run, run, Papa, run. Run, Daddy, run, run, yay, yay, yay. And the son was there saying, yay, yay. And the mom, too, was just crying and clapping. And they were cheering for Dad. And the dad was running as hard as he could. But he was running real slow. And I looked down and said, why is this man running so slow? And it's because he had a great big chain wrapped around him. He had a great big chain wrapped around his legs. And they were just hoping that he would run and break free. And I saw in the spirit a family that was cheering for their father to make it. I saw a woman, a wife, a son, and a daughter cheering for their dad that he would make it. And they were cheering so loud that they were crying. And the dad was trying so hard. 
And I know that there's somebody like that that exists in this church today. I know it. And today, we're going to break those chains. God is going to break those chains. Because I don't care what kind of chain that you have, Dad. I know that we have a Father in heaven who is a chain breaker. Oh, you. We have a Father who lives in heaven and who dwells among us that specializes in breaking every type of chain that exists on this planet. I don't care what chain you came in with. You don't have to leave here with the same chain that you came in with. Because I myself am familiar with running with chains. I'm so familiar with that. And you can't tell me that God cannot break you free. There is nothing that I've ever seen with my eyes or, see or heard with my ears. I've never ran into a chain that God could not break. Never saw one, whether it be cancer, bondages, illnesses, strongholds. It doesn't matter when God shows up, he breaks chains. That's what he does. And so I want to talk just for a few minutes. I don't know how much time we'll get. If we don't finish, that's fine. But I want to talk a little bit about your chain about your chain. Now, you can come into a setting like this and hide your chain. Easy. But really, your family is the one who knows your chain. Because you can't hide it at home. The chain doesn't fall out of your pocket. And your family is most aware of the chain that you carry. And if they're not... The, God, the Lord's eyes go to and fro. He sees everything. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the chain. That way we can break free from it. How many of you like to break free of some chains this morning so that you can go home a little bit lighter? You can enjoy the carne asada, all the corn and all the stuff, a little, feeling a little bit better about yourself. A chain, what is it? A chain is a restraining device. It's a restraining device. A chain is typically used to secure a prisoner who's meant not to be loosed. A chain is meant to get prisoners in their place. A chain is meant to fix a person to a position. It's meant to bind them to a location. It's meant to keep them in a lifestyle or a way of thinking. A chain will force limitations or restrictions on you. If you have a chain in your life, it's not you who determines your life. It's the chain that determines how far you will go. And so you're limited on what you can do as a father or as a husband or as a man of God. When you have a chain, it tells you how far to go. I like the 9 a.m. service. Fear can be a chain. Your fear has limitations. It, it can only, you're only allowed to go so far with your fear. Poverty can be a chain. 
Lust can be a chain. Anger can be a chain. Unforgiveness can be a chain. Addiction can be a chain. Some of you have relationships right now that are chains. You're tied to the wrong person. And it's a person that pulls you back. It's a person that puts limits on you. And God has asked you time and time again to break free from that chain, to let loose from that person because that person is not meant for you. And yet you still stay tied to them. And it's a chain that keeps you bound. You can't get free because a chain is restricting you. It's virtually impossible to experience true freedom when you have a chain. You cannot walk freely with a chain. If you've ever been locked up before, don't answer that. They put chains on your ankles and everybody's kind of walking like this. You can't walk with God with a chain. Your movements are restricted with the chain. You struggle reaching your destination with the chain. The chain is controlling you. If you've ever had a chain, then you understand what I'm talking about. I had a lot of them, so I'm an expert at chains, I guess. I couldn't hide my chains if I tried to. I couldn't come in a church setting like this and no one see my chains. Everybody saw them. It was on my, it was on my face, it was on my clothes, it was on how I smelled, it was on everything. I could not hide what, my chain from anybody. Now, interesting that chains were not invented for humans. Chains were invented for animals. Wild animals are forced into submission by a chain. They're tamed to behave themselves on a chain. They're taught to toil or taught to work for their master while being on a chain. They're taught to perform tricks or, 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 or do like, uh, how do you say, presentations on a chain, like a lion or a circus elephant. They're taught to present or put on a show while they're in a chain. I've always went to the circus wonder, how in the world is this big animal with such great power being controlled by a tiny chain? I know that an animal of that size could easily break free of that chain if it wanted to. Some of you are being controlled by such a small thing, and it's, it's just a lot smaller than you realize it. You have the power of God inside of you to break free of that thing. You see big elephants in the circus, you see lions, you see big gorillas in the circus. They're chained up by a chain. And I know that those things have the power to get free from those chains, but they don't. And the reason why is because when they're young, they're introduced to the chain. When they're babies, they're introduced. When they're weak, feeble, they're introduced to the chain. And the chain, they're taught as a young child or, or young animal, they're taught that this thing controls you. And it doesn't matter how big you get when you feel the tug or the coldness of the chain on your ankle, it's going to tell you, don't move. And so they can be a big animal or a big lion, but they will not move because they've been taught as a young that they are in submission to the chain. See, a chain will remind you of your place. A chain will tell you that you're not allowed to live in a certain part of town. A chain will tell you that you're not allowed to have a certain type of career or a certain caliber of education. A chain will tell you that you're not allowed to have certain foods. Me and mama used to go to the grocery store and we couldn't get the top shelf items because mama had a chain on her. We couldn't get the expensive cereal. We had to get the generic stuff. 
I wanted the good stuff, but it was out of the question because it was a chain of poverty that was attached to my family. And certain types of meals are places we couldn't go dine because a chain was dictating to my family to, to remain in its place. Some of us are not allowed as children to wear certain types of clothes because you are on a chain. Some of you lived your whole life in hand-me-down clothes like me. Do you guys live like anyone like that? You got hand-me-downs. You weren't allowed to go shopping when school came around and go get nice stuff like other, other people. You were given someone else's clothes to wear to, to school. That's the chain. The chain is trying to keep you in your place. A chain is what keeps families tied, living in the strange, same stronghold or the same house for generations. They have a generational chain and you can walk into some homes and feel the oppression that's in that home because of the chain. Great grandpa lived there with a chain. Grandpa lived in the same house with a chain. Father lived in the house with a chain. Uncles, aunties, go down the line. Everybody in that family was bound to a chain. I know that from a fact because that's what I lived. Some of you in here know that for your own life because that's how you live. But the good news is this, that Jesus Christ came to break chains. He came to proclaim liberty to those who are being held captive and offer freedom to those who are being bound. How many would like some freedom today? I wanted it too. And I would watch and I would go in church and I would observe and I would, I'd watch other men celebrate. I'd watch them uh, be like or, orders of the word. I'd watch them interact with their families. I'd watch how they dress. I would study men in church that I deemed that were free, that I wanted to be like that. I wanted it. I was determined to change because I had three boys at home that I loved so much and I just wanted to be a good dad. A good dad, not a smoked out dad, not a drug addict dad, not a fornicating dad, not an adultery dad. I wanted to be the father that I never had for them. And I knew that Jesus was the way. I knew that the only one that could help me would be the father in heaven because I didn't have a father in the flesh. I had to find a father in the spirit. That's why I thank my father, my heavenly father, and spiritual fathers like Pastor Marco that have come alongside and helped nurture me as a father. And I wanted it. How many want that? I want that. And so I believe because I've received a complete transformation of my life. Completely. But here's a fact and something that I learned is that you can be a Christian and still have a chain. Sometimes when you come into church, you hear this. There was a certain sound when I came into church. Even though as a Christian, I come into church and you could actually hear me come in. Because even though I was coming to church, it doesn't mean that I was completely free. Do you understand me? And it didn't matter what kind of clothes I put on or, oh, I had hair back then, how I comb my hair. It didn't matter because there was something that came to church with me. And it was a chain. And I couldn't hide it. I would be at the altar every single year for like two years. For two years, I would be at the same altar getting born again and again and again and again, week after week. 
oil smeared everywhere. I just wanted to be free. I would stop sitting in the back. I started sitting in the front just to make it easier. It's, it's a less, it's a far less walk. Because I knew every single week I'm going to be up there. And I'm going to have drugs in my pocket. And I'm going to be repenting for everything I've done wrong. But here I am trying to be a Christian but have a chain. Now, not all chains are bad because a gold chain is very attractive. A bicycle chain will take you places. A timing chain will keep an engine in sync. A marriage chain will keep couples together like a ball in what? Chain. A spiritual chain will keep us tethered to God. I don't know much, but I know this. There are chain makers and then there are chain breakers. Which one are you? There are people, men, women, parents, mothers, fathers, who put chains on their children. They restrict them. They don't help them. They, they bind them up with the very chains that they too carry. And so children begin to behave like their parents. They begin to rattle just like their parents rattle or jingle like their parents jingle because they're all wearing the same chain. And so the parent is not helping a child to get free. The parent is teaching the child how to stay bound. And so you could be a, a chain maker or you can be a chain breaker. The choice is up to you. But if you're going to be a chain breaker, you're going to have to become super educated. You're going to be super smart. You're going to have to outsmart demons. You're going to have to outsmart your flesh. You're going to have to develop your spirit, man. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to pray in tongues. You're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to go to church. You're going to have to get involved in the power of 12. You're going to have to take all the classes over and over and over again. It's not going to be a one-time thing. I wish it was that. I wish it was that. That would make it so easy if we just came to the altar once in, I don't know, Alakazoom. You're free. But for most people, including myself, being delivered was a process. It was like one link at a time. I mean, I had a lot of devils. I don't know about you, but I had a lot. Of, when I went for deliverance, they had like a list. You had to check all the devils you had. I just kept checking and checking. And checking. There was like a hundred of them. I was like, man. The pastor said, oh, this is going to be long. We're going to be here a long time. It took time. It took 21 years to get these chains. I'd be a fool if I think they're going to fall off in one service. For, I'm not saying that God can't do it because I know for some of you God has, but I'm a little jealous of you. That's your testimony. That wasn't mine. I love when God does that. When someone comes up oh, instantly, they don't even crave drugs anymore. That'd be great. I wish that would happen for me, but that's not what happened. I had to be delivered through a process of time. The staying power, the standing power. I had to learn what those terms mean, where I'm standing with God, chain and all, and I don't care. I'm not going nowhere until I'm free, until I'm delivered, until I'm transformed. I'm going to stay in position. I'm going to keep serving the living God. I don't care how long it takes. I want to be free. You have to have the ability 
to stand when everything else is falling apart. You have to have the ability to stay put and keep going to church, keep reading your Bible, keep praying, because it's not going to be easy. You have a devil out there who seeks to devour you, but you're going to have to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, and you're going to have to outsmart him. Oh, you mean, Pastor, I got to use my brain? Yes, you got to use your brain. You can't kumbaya your way out of everything. That's why God gave you a brain. Not for perverted thoughts. Oh, I got quiet right there too. Huh? <laughs> so are you a good father? Are you a chain maker? Are you putting chains on your family? Are you chain breaking? Are you delivering your family? Help them to become something different than what you were. Are you showing them a lifestyle of Christian living? Not showing them how to be religious, but how to live for God. In our house, our kids saw me and mom go to church mad. They saw me and mom go to church in different cars. We couldn't hide anything. But what we did demonstrate is we're going to church. We're going to church. And somewhere in the process of every service that we went divided, God would put us back together in the middle of his anointing, in the middle of his presence. Me and mom would join hands and we, they would see that the power of God was greater than the division that we were facing and the challenges we were facing at home. We were chain breakers. Now, let me share, you, share a verse with you. I know we ran out of time. Let me share one verse with you. I don't want you to go away and say, he didn't even say one verse. <laughs> what kind of church is this? Let me give you a verse. Go to Acts chapter 26. 26, 16, 26. And the word of the Lord says this, suddenly, say Suddenly. Suddenly, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God, that in the process of these two men praying and singing praises to who? To who? God. To who? God. One more time. To who? The Bible says that in the middle of all that, there was an earthquake. And the earthquake was so strong that it shook the foundations of the prison. Have you ever been around a prayer that kind of shook you? Have you ever been around a praise that kind of made you jerk a little bit? Their prayer and their praise was so loud and so connected to God and to the heavenly realm. The Bible says that all the doors of the jail were opened. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said all of them. I'm not talking about one jail cell. I'm talking about all the jail cells were open. And the Bible goes on to say that the chains on all the prisoners fell off. They fell off. All the doors, what? Open. And all the chains fell off. All the doors and all the chains Through two simple acts, one prayer, the other praise. 
One, here's a recipe for you. You want to learn to get free. Here's your recipe. Number one, prayer. Number two, praise. You put those two together and the doors are going to open. You put those two together and chains are going to fall off of your life. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I want to encourage you to keep your prayer life elevated, to keep your praise life excelling all the time because that is where you're going to receive your biggest breakthrough is in your praise and in your prayer time with God. I've been around men and women when they pray and when they praise, they do it so powerfully. They do it so strong and I don't even have to be a part of it. I can be right next to him and next thing you know, my chain fall off too. You could be the facilitator of chains that break. Your prayers can break chains for your family. Your, your praise can break chains for your neighbor, for your husband, for your children. All of them. All of them. How many want all of them out of your life? I want all of them. Every single one, Pastor. I want all of them out. Let's all stand to our feet. I think for the next service, I'll, I'll finish this up. I know you guys got a date with a big old piece of carne asada. Before you leave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek out what the Lord has showed me, that there's a man in here, and he's struggling to be a dad. He's trying to do all the right things, but it's very hard. Very hard. And I just want to encourage you. As a matter of fact, God wants to encourage you because he gave me this message for you. And you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to let the devil condemn you. God is here for you. And so every head bow, all eyes close in reverence to God and to the person standing next to you. I'm going to petition this man of God to make his way up here and to help get free from every chain that the devil has tried to put on you. Or maybe you're on the other side. You are the wife. You're the child. You're, you're the one praying for the welfare of, of your husband or, or, or your dad. You're praying that they would be free from chains. All eyes closed, head bowed. Don't make it weird for them. Pray for them. This is huge. This is huge. If you're a wife, a grandma, a daughter, praying for your husband, praying for your pops, I want you to come up here and just agree. Agree with one of these altar workers. Agree with them. And if you're in this room, the most important thing is that you have, you're connected to the Father of Lights. You're connected to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus and you want to make a first-time commitment or a reconnection with him, I'm going to invite you to here this morning. If you're a man or woman or child, I'm going to petition you to come forward and give your life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We still have some folks coming forward. Let's all stretch our hands out to these beautiful people come forward. Let's give God a shout of praise for all the, the dads who came forward. This is a big, big step for them. Listen. Dads, look up. Look up maybe for a second. We are cheering for you. We are cheering for you. You understand? We're your biggest fans. We want you to succeed. We want to see your household chain completely changed. You understand? We're not here to judge you. The devil's a liar. We're here to love you, to help you, 
to connect with you so that you can be the man that God has called you to be. And so every man here, raise your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and believe that at the sound of your prayer, our prayers, and at the sound of our praise, that every chain will be broken off these men and women in the name of Jesus, Father. Break every single fetter of iron. Break every strackle. Break every stronghold. Every generational curse. Give them the ability, Father, to say no. To resist. To stand to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give them, Father, the inner capacity, Lord, to endure, to not give up, to keep treading, to keep running their course. Give them wisdom and insight on how to raise their children, how to raise their families, Father. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Say this with me, Jesus, come in, empower me to be the man or woman that you want me to be. I submit myself completely to you, to serve you, to follow you. In the name of Jesus, I believe that you will rescue me and my family. It says in your word, and I believe me and my family. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You guys have a wonderful Father's Day. We love you. We'll see you all Wednesday night. We'll be here.